Hello, today we will be presenting our vehicle design project. The problem for this project is we need to build a vehicle that will carry a golf ball and drop it onto a target that is anywhere between 10 and 25 feet away. Some constraints for this vehicle is that it must be powered by rubber bands or rubber strips or tubes. The vehicle can't weigh more than a pound or cost more than $20. It can't be attached to any point outside of the vehicle. The ball must be carried by the vehicle and not pushed by it. And the ball must initially land on the target, not having to stay on the target afterwards. And for the vehicle to succeed, we needed it to be a creative design. We needed to be able to test it multiple times without it falling apart. We need to be able to predict how far the ball will be carried before it's dropped, and we need to be able to build it in a timely manner. Our brainstorming was separated into three facets of the design. The release mechanism for the ball, the propulsion system, and the construction material. This is a design that I created. In this design, the ball would be held on a piece that's on the back of the vehicle that is held there by a hinge and a string that is connected to a spool at the front of the vehicle. As the vehicle moves forward, the spool would unravel the string, causing the string to loosen until the ball holder can no longer hold the ball, dropping it. And now Lars will talk about the rest of our brainstorming. So like you mentioned, we separate our brainstorming process into three aspects of the code design. The release mechanism of the golf ball, the vehicle proportion, and the construction material. For the release mechanism, we had a few ideas um, on how to release the golf ball. David came up with an idea that used a spool um, and string that would be released when the golf ball reached the end of its travel, um, tilting the golf ball forward, and placing it on the target. Another possible idea we had was a trapdoor-like mechanism where a trapdoor would be below the golf ball and as the vehicle reached the end of its distance, the trapdoor would open the golf ball and fall onto the target. Um, some ideas we had for the vehicle propulsion system were just using a fan and a rubber band where the rubber band would be wound up with the fan at the end, propelling the vehicle forward. Another possible idea we had was combining the propulsion system and the release mechanism into one vehicle where rubber bands would be wrapped around the axles um, and as the vehicle moved forward, the rubber bands would lower the ball to the ground. Um, in order to make a final decision of our prototype, we created an evaluation matrix similar to the one we used in class. Um, and we've created three different matrices for the release mechanism, the repulsion system, and the construction material. Some of the properties we chose to evaluate were the accuracy of the design, durability, creativity, feasibility, cost, um, and weight. With the release mechanism, um, we were debating between the spool cradle mechanism um, and the lower as it goes, but spool cradle mechanism won because of the accuracy. In evaluating the vehicle propulsion system, um, we decided on the one direction of our band as it was the simplest, most accurate, and most reliable. And then finally, in evaluating the construction material, um, we were deciding between Lego and wood. Um, initially, we were concerned about the cost of Lego, but as we were able to evaluate it, we realized we could afford it um, and decided on Lego as it was the most creative, simple, and reliable. So based off of these three design matrices, we, we created a prototype design that would employ the spool cradle method to release the golf ball, a one directional rubber band to repel the, the vehicle, um, and build the vehicle out of Legos. So we decided to make the spool cradle design with a one directional rubber band. You can see that prototype here. So this prototype had a couple of issues with trying to get the string to align consistently around our spool. Uh, to, in order to keep it from winding loose and kind of inconsistencies there, we added some friction in. Unfortunately, we weren't able to overcome that friction while coasting, and if we tried to add more power, the vehicle would flip over when it started. 
So we came up with this other idea and added it to our evaluation matrix. It came out really well, just being a persistent design that was not dependent on the road bandware. So we built a prototype of it, and it was pretty consistent in our original testing. We did have some issues with the release being a little bit vague because of the way that the road band was supposed to release off the axle when the vehicle got to the end of its travel. But the road band was a little too long, and also the vehicle was flexy and consistently turned left. You can see another picture of it here. Um, we also had the same trouble initially with the vehicle flipping over. For that, we added some gears, which in addition to keeping it from flipping, allowed us to get greater distances. And we eventually decided to go with this idea for our final design, and David can tell you about some of the changes we made to make it work better. Okay, so moving on from our second prototype, we refined that to, into our final design. We lengthened the vehicle a little bit, and we improved the structure to make it less flexy. We also continued our use of gears, um, that, because they enable greater distances. The release mechanism, the propulsion system, and the distance control were all controlled by the same rubber bands, so this provided a great deal of simplicity to the vehicle, which also, and that was a great, improve, a great improvement. The performance was also unaffected by the wear and tear on the rubber bands, which provided consistency among um, among the runs, and, and also the Lego construction provided a durable, accurate, and lightweight design. Longer distances, however, resulted in permanent deformation of the rubber bands, and, and, improve, and improvements would be necessary in order to um, achieve greater distances, more than 25 feet. In testing, we recorded the number of rotations of the wheel of, of our vehicle, and, and how far the vehicle went with that number of rotations. We plotted that on a graph to then be able to predict how, far, how much we would need to wind up the rubber bands to achieve a particular distance. Out of our 32 tests, only one failed. And however, the vehicle consistently turned towards the left. We, then when we, we found that when we switched the wheels, it turned towards the right. So upon some measuring, we found that the tires were slightly different sizes by half a millimeter. And so we changed the tires and the vehicle traveled straight in the following tests. There were some possible improvements that we could make to this design. In particular, if we wanted to go a greater distance, we could use higher quality rubber bands higher gear ratio or a longer body. For, if we wanted to reduce cost, we could 3D print the design or use different tires, as the tires were the most expensive part of the vehicle. And this vehicle is sponsored by Hot Diggity Dogs. They, they are located in the mall behind New River Community College and make great hot dogs.